So hello, I'm Cham Hertz, the Director for the Human Resources Department, and I'm here today to present to you the fiscal year 2022's annual budget. Let me start with a summary of the services at the HR department. So the HR department is staffed with a total of seven FTEs. This is a reduction from the FY18 budget. Uh, and those seven FTEs provide core services to the city of Springfield employees, uh, which includes overseeing the employee and labor relations. And we have five different labor contracts that we oversee and help support, administrate, and negotiate, uh, which also includes our class and compensation system, our benefit, and our recruitment process, what we refer to as talent acquisition. Uh, in addition to that, the Human Resources Department also includes the fiduciary responsibility of the city's insurances, which we typically call as risk management. Uh, which I'll spend more time in this presentation talking about some of the details associated with that, as well as the administration of our protected leaves, uh, coordination and support for our volunteer programs, as well as the city's payroll services. On a positive note, the HR department's budget is staying uh, essentially flat, showing a slight 2%, uh, uh, what I would call, uh, kind of cost of living adjustment uh, over the next fiscal year. Uh, and I'll talk about some of the highlights specifically on some of those slides, some of the slides coming up uh, related to why that 2% cost increase is going. But we are essentially budgeting a net zero difference. With regards to accomplishments over the FY21 year, um, here's a list of just a number of the uh, different activities that we successfully accomplished, and in no way is a comprehensive list of all of the uh, achievements of my department. Uh, first and foremost was we finally implemented uh, a citywide online recruitment system. This took multiple actions and efforts, uh, but we went with a new product. It's a third-party hosted system called NeoGov. Uh, we're very happy with that system. That tool has uh, not only eased the uh, effort and work on the recruitment for the internal side, but also for our applicants has significantly improved the applicant experience uh, by allowing them to create online accounts and not have to go through a full uh, application process every time that they apply. Uh, it's also third party hosted, uh, so it hasn't required any additional resources on the IT departments. The second item was the implementation or the start, what I would call the initial step of the Enterprise Risk Management Program. Uh, this is a new uh, program within the city which was designed to handle some of the issues that were happening with our property and liability insurances. Uh, I will have a slide here shortly that will talk about that in a little bit more depth, but this Enterprise Risk, Mo Risk Management Program, ERM, uh, is designed to really get the decision makers together and really understand the liabilities and risks with some of the services and activities that we have as a city. So it's a first critical step uh, for a long-term solution on managing insurance costs for the city. Uh, the other part that we did is we finally um, inked uh, the contract and we are now in the process of implementing a new risk management information system. Uh, so this is the database system, the technology solution for uh, coordinating and overseeing uh, the various claims that we have within the city uh, and allows um, better reporting to meet our federal and state regulatory requirements. And so we're very excited. This will also carry over into our uh, FY22 objectives, uh, but is a critical step for uh, supporting the insurance needs that we have within our organization. Additionally, COVID had hit us all hard over the last year. Um, I don't necessarily need to repeat this in, in any depth, but it did have a significant impact on some of our other goals and objectives that we were hoping to achieve in this fiscal year. Uh, the HR department staffed with the seven FTEs that we have did everything we could to support not only uh, the employees as we were dealing with a pandemic and the challenges associated with school closures and childcare closures, uh, the rollout of federal new leave laws to provide protections in place that needed support from the HR department, coordination for our staff. Uh, but in addition to uh, supporting all of those activities, the HR department also uh, helped man the EOC, both for the city uh, as a whole related to the COVID-19 pandemic, but also for Lane County with regards to the holiday farm fire, uh, which really created a lot of catastrophe and a lot of challenges for uh, city employees and for our community as a whole. Um, the, and then finally, the last um, accomplishment that I wanted to highlight was for the fifth year in a row, we've achieved our Oregon um, City Silver Safety Award for um, workplace injuries and return to work. So this is a, 
a bar that we try to set every year. Um, we've been uh, privileged and effective um, really at the employee level of really making sure that we minimize the number of days that employees are off work as a result of an injury. So five accomplishments, ones that we're all really proud of as an HR department, um, and we look forward to the ongoing challenges that we have moving forward into the future. The part of the EHR's budget, or a significant part of the HR budget, is the fiduciary responsibility of three of our reserve programs. One of those is the self-funded medical insurance program, uh, which you see highlighted in the chart above. Uh, I'm just gonna call out a couple pieces onto that. So the shadowed area in the bar graph is the reserve dollars that we um, maintain within the fund, and you'll see that those have peaked up in FY18, um, and we've been slowly trying to bring those down. There's a blue dotted line near the bottom of that chart which is really where we want, um, or we would say it's kind of the target area for where our reserve funds will be. So in other words, we have a very healthy uh, benefit reserve, uh, which has allowed us to maintain very stable benefit insurance costs for our employees. In fact, we've not had a rate increase either for the employees or for the city uh, in seven years, which is really unheard of uh, and is factored with a number of core successes. Some of those have been just the ability for our employees to stay healthy. Uh, the other significant part of that is we have a self-funded medical on-site clinic which allows convenient care for our employees, but more importantly allows us to do um, early detection for employee injuries or employee illnesses uh, and also uh, provides medical care at a basic level for our employees that doesn't have to get run through our insurances, uh, which keeps our rates relatively flat. Um, so what you're seeing on that chart is um, a healthy reserve and a very stable but slight tick up of benefit costs um, over the, really since FY15. Um, the other thing I would call out is this last fiscal year um, or this last calendar year as it relates to our benefit rates, uh, we really, we, we came out less than expected um, and that is in part to a number of reasons that some of which is related to just COVID and the fact that people aren't as out and doing as many things. Uh, but under that, the other parts of that are just really that we've had a really healthy workforce, which could be credited to uh, our Know Your Numbers campaign and the wellness initiatives that we have as a city. We also take a very um, uh, cautious approach to our budgeting process. So while we are um, conservatively budgeting for an increase in fiscal 22, which is an approach that we take every year just to maintain um, you know, the fiduciary needs and the budgetary needs of the um, self-funded benefit plan, we do anticipate that at the end of the year that that actual cost will drop significantly we'll be, and we'll be closer to FY21's cost. Um, so that's what I have on that slide. Um, the other um, reserve fund that we maintain is the property liability insurance. And this is the area that gives me the most pause and the most concern as we move forward. Uh, you know, there's no... Um, way to kind of curtail around the conversation. We've been in the news quite a bit with regards to uh, tort claims and suits towards our police department or our jail, uh, which in themselves are high liability costs. But uh, because we've had higher than anticipated claims against us, we've been notified by our insurance provider that we've had to change our plan design and we're now on a $250,000 per claim deductible. Um, so as a result of that, we are increasing um, fees across the city um, to budget a higher number of dollars that we need to maintain in order to preserve our insurance costs for our department. In addition to that, we've also rolled out the um, Enterprise Risk Management Program uh, and, of course, the technology solutions that we're all looking at as ways to try to control the costs associated with insurances, uh, which even if we had normal uh, experiences, uh, we would still anticipate larger increases just on a global level, uh, especially as it relates to property-related um, damages that we've seen over the years, primarily as a part of global warming uh, and the impact that that's having on our environment. The other area that we're also seeing larger concerns and stresses has to do with the management of technology, specifically around cybersecurity coverage. Uh, and so that is increasing annually around 30 to 50% on its own. Uh, and the city is taking actions to do what we can to maintain the right and adequate level of insurance coverage, but also to put technology systems in place that will help us control costs and minimize the actual liability or risk that we might receive. And finally, and probably one of the more um, quiet reserve funds that we have is our workers' compensation. We, as I talked about earlier, we have uh, lower than expected claims. Um, this is an area we historically have done well. 
However, our primary um, workers' comp provider, which is CIS, uh, is transitioning out of the workers' comp business, and we are transitioning vendors uh, to SAFE. And in order to make that transition, uh, we are budgeting additional dollars because we'll have to carry coverage for some period of time, probably two to four years, uh, with both providers. One, to address uh, active claims that we currently have for workplace injuries. As those transition off, new claims will start moving over to our safe provider. Uh, so while we anticipate a short-term um, two-year cost increase, the long-term experience for us will be a budgetary savings for the city. And so while we're, um, you know, while it's difficult and challenging to move away from CIS as it relates to workers' comp because we've had a very good partnership, uh, we look forward to the partnership that we'll have ahead with SAFE. Looking ahead and thinking about the FY22 initiatives that we will be working on over this next fiscal year, there are six ones that I'll highlight. Uh, the first is the transition to workers' comp. Uh, this, uh, and this is what I just talked about with the transition from CIS to SAFE. This will be a high objective for us. We have to start making that transition with an effective date of July 1, uh, which requires not only a number of contract changes, but also working with our labor partners uh, in changing the way that we provide workers' comp services to our employees. The second part of that is the continued formation of the Enterprise Risk Program. This is a high priority project because the liability and risk to the city is so significant. Uh, so the executive team and the risk management team will continue to work comprehensively on identifying risks and putting in tactics and strategies to mitigate or lower those risks for which we have control over. Third is um, continuing to build a business case for our um, for either a vendor solution or a technology solution to help us with the administration of our protected leaves. And so protected leaves I'm talking about, of course, are those leaves that are covered either under the Oregon Family Medical Leave Act, uh, the Federal Family Medical Leave Act, or leaves that may additionally be covered under the Americans with Disabilities Act. Uh, that continues to be a struggle and challenge for us. Uh, and as the state of Oregon looks towards the implementation of the Oregon paid sick leave, uh, additional resources or support is gonna be necessary for us to do that effectively, not only for the employee experience, but also for tracking and managing our regulatory requirements. The fourth item on there is the um, is, is an initiative that we are taking with regards to our deferred compensation, so retirement savings uh, or retirement planning for our employees. The city currently has three different vendors that we're working with. This is administratively challenging for us given our technology limitations and staffing resources, uh, and it also limits the level of compensation, or excuse me, deferred, excuse me, retirement savings programs that we're able to offer our employees. And so our goal is to um, target an idea of moving to a single deferred um, provider if possible, uh, but adding in the addition of a Roth savings option for our employees. The fifth item is the um, finalizing an agreement for a vendor solution for our criminal background check um, process, which we do for our pre-hire. Uh, currently, um, or I should say, we, we currently kind of work with our police department to provide that service, but it has limitations uh, with regards to regulatory requirements. Uh, we received budget dollars last fiscal year to implement a vendor solution. We've not had a chance to complete that work, so we're targeting the final completion and hiring of a vendor uh, this fiscal year. And then last and definitely not least, but one of the more important areas is the continued effort for diversity and inclusion work within the city. We know that this is an area where we are underrepresented and, and, and in some ways losing key talent for our uh, community. So the HR department is going to focus on a couple of core initiatives to improve the efforts and actions that we're doing. Uh, most of those are in training and education for the interview and selection process. Uh, we've outlined some uh, solutions and ways that we can help educate our leaders uh, and ultimately improve our hiring and selection process. And so we're targeting those initiatives over the next fiscal year. Long-term efforts on the HR department are really limited to five items. I covered these items last budget and I'll continue those through this budget process. First is benefit control costs. Although this is an area that we are very effective in, um, it is still an area that requires a lot of effort and maintenance and education and awareness. And so that becomes a long-term um, strategy for us and something that we routinely uh, maintain primarily because it is a huge budgetary cost for our taxpayers, and so the effective management of that continues to be important. The second item is turnover. Uh, this little 
uh, bar graph that you see on the bottom of this chart reflects an upward trend of turnover um, that in part is connected to um, higher than expected retirements, which was not fully unexpected as we look at the retirement of the baby boom generation, uh, but still impacting the city fairly significantly. And so we've seen a growth, significant peak in our turnover uh, over this last fiscal year. Some of that has to do with COVID, uh, as well as a um, stock market that's relatively high. Um, and so we saw a large increase in retirements and an overall increase from 8% to 11% in our overall turnover. Uh, and even if you de delve deeper into the, the data, uh, our, vol our voluntary turnover, those individuals that are choosing to leave our organizations to seek other employment, um, has peaked up from its traditional area of around 35 or 4% upwards of over 5%. So this is an ongoing concern, an area that we need to spend some time and effort looking at. Third item, as I talked about earlier, uh, is the property and liability um, costs. And so the uh, continued effort and um, dedication and commitment on the level of the executive team and the city as a whole to really look at our insurance costs and put in plans in place that reduce our liability uh, continues to be uh, a high level importance in an area that we continue to see additional costs, um, some of which are controllable. Fourth is the administration of protected leaves. This is a complicated area. This is an area that, um, although we've been pretty effective in, is an area that if you look at nationally, um, lawsuits against employers continue to grow on. So making sure that we're skilled at a leadership level and at an HR level at supporting our employees through their protected leave programs uh, will stay out as a high level item for us. And finally, technology, which really touches all of the other items. Uh, but is a cost. And so how do you make decisions around what is the right technology to bring on? Do you bring it on internally or do you look at a third party hosted solution to minimize the IT uh, experience or labor costs uh, are decisions that we have to look forward in the future um, in order to meet all of our goals and objectives that we have within the HR department. And with that, I conclude uh, and I thank you very much uh, for your time and effort and support that you do with the city's budget program. Thank you.